Today I'm going to show you how you can build a super powerful map just like this directly into your Webflow website, all with no code and using the best no code tools out there like Jetboost, Webflow, Mapbox, and even Notion. This map that you see here is just a perfect example of how easily we can build something that is crazy powerful, where I can literally click on different locations, it'll jump around, I can zoom, I can even change the colors here. So we're gonna get into this and just to see the end here, the preview of this, all of these locations are gonna be living in a Notion spreadsheet. So I can not only create this map, but manage it and scale it to eventually hundreds or even thousands of different locations around the world. Now, Jetboost is amazing and makes a lot of this stuff really easy. So in this video, I'm just gonna help you go step by step. So you can literally copy this exact workflow and just know that you're not missing any of the pieces. So a good place to start is literally with Jetboost's template. So you can of course add this map into one of your own sites, but just to get an understanding of how easy this is, I'd recommend starting with their template. And I'll link to it in the show notes, but you can literally copy this and clone it in Webflow all for free. Now, once you do that, you're gonna end up with a Webflow site like this. And so this example here is a list of San Diego hotspots, right? So these are a handful of locations that they've preloaded just to make this really easy. Once you've copied the template here, we're gonna go ahead and create a Jetboost account and connect it there. In Jetboost, you'll see here, we've got maps example hooked up. And so to start adding our map functionality, we're gonna click on add booster. Jetboost has a ton of really awesome features. And so here we'll just pick CMS map, but a lot of the other ones are worth checking out as well. When I create that, it's gonna ask me for a Mapbox public API key. You can go to Mapbox and create your own account. It also takes just a few minutes, but ultimately what is going to happen, it's gonna provide you with one of these public tokens. You can go ahead and copy that and bring this back into your site and copy and paste it there. Once that's live, it's gonna show you your street style. You know, we can go with outdoors. Uh, I think dark is a pretty cool one. Uh, maybe we we'll go with dark, that one's cool. And let's just use some of the default settings here. Again, you can customize all of this in Jetboost, but just for the sake of understanding how this works, all the defaults uh, will be pretty good. So let's go ahead and continue. Now, once we've set that up, we're gonna to need to add this little Jetboost script in order for all of Jetboost functionality to work. So the way to do that is literally just go ahead and copy that script, go to your site's settings in Webflow, look for that head code and paste it in. It's gonna look just like this. And once you've pasted it in, you'll wanna go ahead and publish it. Once that is done, you can come back over here, hit test and continue. And Jetboost will give you this really nice checkbox that just tells you that you've set it up correctly. Now, once you've done that bit, let's hop back into Webflow. And the key thing that it's gonna ask you to do here is set up a little uh, tag for the collection list wrapper, right? So if we go into Webflow, the way this is set up is if we go into their CMS, they have one table called locations, right? And it's got a handful of different locations. If we click into one of them, you can start to see what this looks like. So latitude, longitude, right? Just some basics here. Now, once you've set up a similar type of collection, and again, with their template, you don't need to do this. Uh, it just comes out of the box. You can go to the designer and find the collection. Let's open this up. And we can just go ahead and open up all of these site pieces. So you can see this a little better. Why don't we make this a little wider? And we'll notice a couple things here. So we have a wrapper, right? So this is a collection list. Let's even take, take away these uh, classes for a sec, just so you can see what this looks like by default, right? So you'll see collection list wrapper, right? And this is where we're going to be telling Webflow. We wanna show our list of items, or in this case, list of locations, right? On that wrapper, we need to add the class that Jetboost has suggested. So it's this one right here. Let's go ahead and copy it, go to back to Webflow, and open this up, pop that in and create, right? Once we've done that, don't forget, you'll need to publish the site in order for that to show up and be something that Jetboost can actually see. Um, another thing to watch out for is make sure you don't copy and paste this and put it on the list or the list item, right? There'll be other things we wanna put there, but we wanna make sure this is on the wrapper. That should look good. Once we've done that, we're going to need to add this Jetboost collection item embed and so a similar type of idea, 
or we're, we're going to copy this. We're going to open up Webflow. This time we are going to go directly into this item and open this up. This again, template comes with this code embed. If this wasn't here, all you'd have to do is hit plus and then search for embed and add that. We don't need two of them, so we'll stick with the one that they added, but that's really it. You'll open that up in the settings and paste this in and save and close. So that's step two here. Um, finally, we're gonna wanna add two data attributes for latitude and longitude. So coming back to the data for a second, just so you can see ultimately what this is, each of these locations has an actual latitude and longitude. That's how we get it to show up on the map. And so we need to tie the data that is in the CMS to the correct spot on the map. And so again, to do that, all we're going to have to do is grab this, so jb-latitude, open up this specific collection item and go to custom attributes. So here, let's go ahead and open up this item, go to settings and scroll down. And again, the template comes with this, but if it didn't, all you'd have to do is hit plus and add the name and the value that you wanted, right? So that's how you add those custom attributes. So this is all looking good. We can move on forward and go ahead and hit test and continue. So I've done this on, just to call that out, on sort of the main homepage here. So this looks good, there's nothing I have to add, but if you were to have added this on a different place in your site, all you'd have to do is pop that in there. But we can hit test and continue and all looks good. So that all passed. Now we're getting into the final steps here. And this number one, creating the container for your map is basically what is going to literally contain the map, right? So it's this whole section here that we're going to be able to zoom in and zoom out of. And so we go into our Webflow site. Again, the template makes this really easy. There's literally something called map container, but you can do this yourself. Again, it's literally just a div. If you were to come up here and hit you know, div block, right? That, that's all it is. You just have to define it as your container. And again, look out for some of these callouts, right? It's gotta be a block display, don't add any padding, things like that. But once you've found or created that container, we're just gonna go ahead and grab this class so that Jetboost can identify it. Come over here, go to style, pop that in like that. And there we go. Again, don't forget to publish, to make that go live there. And that should be good to go. We can go ahead and hit test and continue. And once again, we get the very cool green check mark. So we look good. Let's go ahead with final checks. Amazing. We are in business. So this is now live. We can go ahead and open up our staging site to see this in action. And there we go. Because we chose dark instead of light, this site is the dark mode version. But that is it. We've got our Mapbox site running. It's got literal locations here for each of the things on this right side. Now let me show you how you can take that to the next level. So here in our San Diego hotspots, we've got 19 hotspots. It's a really nice way just to see what this map can do. I might need to create a site that has 100, 1,000, or even 10,000 different locations, right? For example, if I was operating businesses across the country or wanting to show an Airbnb type uh, product, you know, 10 or 20 items is just not gonna cut it. And adding a thousand items like this into Webflow and managing it is something you probably don't wanna do. So to make this more scalable, what I've done is set up a sync with my Webflow CMS and Notion. So in the example I just showed, all of those San Diego sites are actually managed in a Notion database. And so if I needed to, let's say, update Cannonball to, I don't know, Cannonball Z, right? This will sync from Notion into Webflow pretty instantly, and this will be live, right? If I needed to all of a sudden change this image, I can do the same here. But the most powerful thing I can do is just create new locations, right, as they come up. So I can come in here and let's say I wanted to add, you know, San Diego Zoo, something like that, right? I can do that, pop that into my Notion CMS, start to fill this out with the image that I want, I'll want to, of course, pop in a latitude and longitude to make sure that it actually shows up in my map. But what's really nice is that, again, in Notion, this is super easy. It's not like going into the Webflow CMS. In fact, I can give this to someone on the team that isn't even a Webflow developer because everyone knows how to use a spreadsheet, right? 
So let's go ahead and pop that open. Let's make this an active uh, one. And there we go. So if I navigate back over to my site over here and refresh the page, what will happen is now San Diego Zoo it pops up right at the top, right? This is the power of having Notion as my CMS for a Webflow site like this. It's just super, super easy. And all of this is done with Whale Sync. So here's literally the sync. It is a simple one between that location CMS and Webflow and that locations database and Notion. I'm syncing each of these fields two way. And so, yeah, if I wanted to go into Webflow and make that same change in the reverse, I can always open up the data, go into the CMS and change San Diego Zoo. This will sync back to my Notion, right? All of this is just working instantly because of my two-way sync. Once I have my data in Notion, I can utilize all of the awesome features of Notion, including Notion's new AI features. So imagine I've just set this up, right? I've added my locations and I wanna add a new field. We'll do an AI custom autofill. And basically what we'll say is write a one sentence description about this location. So we'll try it and see what it does for those first five. And yeah, I think that looks good. So let's go ahead and save and autofill. Eh, we'll leave it off for now. Now what Notion AI has done here is it has literally looked at the location. So here, this one's a Cannonball Z, but Jay and Tony's is probably a better example. And it's going to write a description. It's a vibrant food and drink establishment. This one is a vibrant seafood restaurant, right? You might need to play around to get the exact prop you want, but you can start to see just how powerful it is when you take those AI fields and sync them back into Webflow to show up as descriptions here or whatever else you need on your website. So that's how to combine the power of Notion, Notion AI, JetBoost, Mapbox, and Webflow to bring a map like this to your site all with no code. If you have any questions about how to do any of this, shoot me a note, leave a, a comment. Uh, I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible, but happy to help anyone that's trying to build something just like this.